to my channel. It's been quite a while since my last video and I have some exciting news to share. I just came back home from a trip to Japan! Yay! So if you've been following along my story for a while now, you are very aware that I am so passionate about my Japanese heritage and learning more about the different aspects of the culture. But before this trip, my only time being in Japan was when I was about one year old, so I have no memories of that first trip. So I really considered this trip my very first time being in Japan. And it was very important for me and my journey of identity and finding myself within Japanese culture. Because as a fourth generation descendant, sometimes I do still feel a bit disconnected from Japanese culture. And that was the whole premise of my thesis for my master's that I finished in December as we explored uh, various different women's uh, backgrounds that I interviewed. And along the way, I also was exploring my own identity as a Japanese descendant. So going back nearly 22 years later was such a magical experience and I really hope I can go back real soon. <laughs> so for today's video, I wanted to share some of the fun things that I brought home with me. It is quite the big haul, so let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to show you guys is something that I'm actually wearing under my kimono today. I thought it would be fun to dress up for today's video and also because I'm doing a Stella Lou Disney bound for the Year of the Rabbit. My year! So I was hoping to get something for kimono kitsuke related uh, to help me do dressings uh, because it's become a hobby now for because of my thesis, but as you might have expected, kimono is very, very expensive and I unfortunately couldn't find a lot of things. Um, so I'm hoping to find maybe vintage or used kimono pieces to build up my collection in the future. But what I did find was an accessory. So under this I am wearing a coding belt, which is a which is an elastic belt to help tie everything together for your kimono. So I have been using fabric ties for my past kitsuke and that has worked fine. But with the videos that I've been watching about kimono advice, I've been seeing this belt a lot so I wanted to try it out. And so far I think it's been holding up pretty well. Okay, so next up we're gonna look at Tokyo Disney Resort! So I could only go to Disney uh, for one day, which was Christmas. It was so cool celebrating Christmas at the parks. And because I only had one day, I had to pick from Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. And I've been seeing a lot of YouTube videos that recommended that I try out Tokyo Disney Sea first because it's more exclusive to Japan and has a lot of things that the other parks or especially the ones in America here don't have. So I definitely wanted that unique experience, so I went to Tokyo Disney Sea. And even the bags have Mickey with Tokyo Disneyland and Minnie with Tokyo Disney Sea. I am definitely keeping these. So since it was around Christmas and New Year's, I was so lucky to get my hands on some pieces from the New Year collection. And the New Year collection, like this teacup that I bought, features Mickey, Minnie uh, in traditional clothing, kimono and hakama. So I definitely fell in love with this whole collection and I got almost everything. <laughs> And because it's also the year of the rabbit in the Zodiac calendar this year, uh, we do have a lot of bunnies featured in this design as well. We have Thumper and Miss Bunny from Bambi, Judy from Zootopia, and the March Hare and the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. And on the inside of the teacup, they have the volcano from Tokyo Disney Sea and Cinderella's Castle from Tokyo Disneyland. Also from the collection, I got the little pouch because I just couldn't get enough of this design. And like the teacup, it has Mickey and Minnie in the front and the bunnies on the back. And lastly from the New Year collection, I got this Mickey keychain. 
Mickey is wearing a traditional hakama and I immediately ran to grab him. I saw in the catalog that there was a mini wearing furisode, also a plush keychain. I unfortunately didn't see her being sold anywhere when I was at the parks and I also couldn't find her anywhere on Shop Disney Japan. I did find her on eBay though, she was being sold for $90, so unfortunately I don't think I can complete the set today, but I hope that maybe in the future I can find Minnie for my Mickey! shop I also got this really cute Rapunzel ring set the design is really cool because it looks like her princess tiara and the second ring has the kingdom of corona sun emblem and you guys know I love my girl Rapunzel so I definitely had to grab this and I knew I also had to grab some stationery I got this really pretty pastel tin that has Cinderella castle and Tinkerbell on it and inside this tin are actually flaky stickers looks like there are 35 pieces and they feature various different attractions around the parks. File folders are also really popular at Tokyo Disney and I find that they're really fun to collect because they have some really cute art. So the first one that I picked out was this Happy Birthday Mickey one. I really love the colors and there are a bunch of sparkly confetti uh, decorations on it. And on the back there are also little castles, Mickey heads, Mickey gloves, uh, and a present that says 2022. So that was a cool way to like wrap up the year and go into 2023. And I also picked up this bigger file folder that is Small World themed. And you might recognize this artwork from Joey Chu. I really love his Disney art and his style, especially the Small World designs. You guys might know about my annual Small World Parade, which is uh, an online event that I host every year where we celebrate the different cultures within the Disney fan community. And I often use Joey Chu's artwork to help design the parade. So in the front we have Dumbo, Peter Pan and his friends, and small the Small World's front. And inside we have more characters like Aladdin and Jasmine, Alice and the Mad Hatter, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Tigger and Piglet. And on the back we have Cinderella Castle with the fireworks and Fantasia Mickey. So this is a giant trifold folder that can carry a lot of stuff so it would be really handy. And as I was getting ready to leave the parks and waiting for the monorail, I saw that there were some gachapon machines, which is like one of those uh, like turning machines where you put in some coins and you get a random toy. And I wanted to try my hand at this Beauty and the Beast set that I thought was really adorable because they were all sleeping. As you can see, this is what I wanted to get. I was hoping to get Belle or Beast, and I got Lumiere, which isn't bad, but I feel kind of scammed <laughs> because of how tiny he is. He is still cute, but this cost me $4, so I did feel a little bit bad. But he'll still go great in my Beauty and the Beast bookshelf. Moving on to Sumiko Gudashi. Sumiko Gudashi is a set of characters from the company San X. That is one of my favorite set of characters. I really like their little backstory as well. They're supposed to be things that are like left behind or forgotten. So one of my favorite sumikos is called Ebi Furai Shippo and it's uh, the tail end of a shrimp tempura that like you can't eat so it just gets le left behind on the plate. So that's her backstory and I find it really cute but sad and ah so adorable. <laughs> So I definitely had to go look for some Sumiko Gudashi merch. And since we were just talking about gachapon machines, the very first gachapon that I got in Japan was this Sumiko Gudashi like, coin pouch? Little pouch thing. <laughs> it has a zipper in the back and the design is the penguin uh, and he's wearing a cat costume. 
So I thought that was, this was a pretty good bargain. I believe it was either 200 or 300 yen. So two to three dollars for a pretty nice pouch. <laughs> And then at one of the convenience stores, I believe it was Lawson's, I saw that there was a Sumiko Gurashi Kuji lottery. And I have seen Kujis uh, online on YouTube for a while now, so I wanted to try to uh, have that experience as well. So what you do is you buy a lottery ticket, uh, and then at the counter, at the cashier, they'll give you a box with little slips that you tear open and you see what letter you get and then the letter corresponds to a prize. So I got H and so this was the H prize. Uh, I believe this is a coaster uh, because I thought it was a keychain at first but there's no keychain hole. <laughs> but it has my favorite Ibi Fry and Tonkatsu. And the theme of this Kuji lottery was the Sumiko gang uh, in like a bathhouse. It was a bath theme. So they have like onsen accessories and things like that. And for this one, Tonkatsu and Ebi Fry are supposed to be in like a bath, but it's a cooking pot. <laughs> And then I went and found a whole bunch of more Sumiko stuff at a store called Kittyland and also uh, underneath Tokyo Station. So at Tokyo Station, I got these plushies of again Tonkatsu and Ebi Fry. And these are exclusives to the Tokyo Station store. They're both wearing uh, traditional clothing and Tonkatsu is wearing one of the train captain's hats. So really cute, really adorable set together. And then I got this mechanical pencil that has all the friends in there too. I got this Hanko stamp with my name on it. So Japanese people carry Hanko stamps with their usually their family name and they use it as a signature. This one uh, I think is for kids because it has Sumiko Gurashi and it has first names written in hiragana instead of kanji. So this one says Aya and this was just for fun. And then my biggest purchase at the Sumiko Gurashi store was this little bag. I already have way too many like character bags in my closet but I couldn't help myself. This one was too too cute to pass up. It is absolutely covered in Sumiko Gurashi characters. We have Tonkatsu, the cats, penguin, the polar bear, even like the smaller characters like the bobas and the ghosts. And the front also has a really nice uh, metal plaque. Uh, and then my mom also found another Sumiko plushie of the polar bear and this was actually from a sports store. So because it was uh, like a sports outdoor store, uh, the Sumiko characters had a camping theme. So this is polar bear uh, making curry. <laughs> and also at Kitty Land, I picked up this really nice pom pom pudding sweatshirt. This is one of the first things that I saw at the Sanrio floor and it's kind of like a comic book page. So Pudding is really excited to eat his pancake but then his friend takes a bite. <laughs> and I wore this throughout my trip in Japan so it was a really comfortable sweater to have. So Tokyo Station has this underground like mall and there's a place called Character Street where you can find stores of all of your favorite characters from Sanrio, Villakuma, Sumiko Gurashi, Disney, anime like Demon Slayer and Precure, NHK characters like Domokun, and there was also a Studio Ghibli store. So it was hard to resist buying absolutely everything at the Ghibli store, but I did a pretty good job and I only got this mystery button. So I read online that these buttons are exclusive to the Tokyo Station as well. You can only grab them there. And they're really nice because they're embroidered. So the pack that I got was Kiki's Delivery Service. So there are eight design possibilities that I can get. And I'm really hoping for a Gigi one because I really like the cat designs. So let's see what I got. I've been waiting to open this up with you guys. Oh, I got Kiki! A beautiful, beautiful button. And as you guys can see, it's really nicely embroidered. I really love it. And speaking 
speaking of the train stations, I really fell in love with the Suica penguin. <laughs> So all around Japan, they have a lot of what's called like PR mascots. They have a lot of mascots for all kinds of things. Like not only sports teams, but also like schools, companies, cities, neighborhoods, and also train stations. So one of the ways you can get around Japan really easily is through the subway and train stations. At first it was really intimidating and hard to navigate, but after a few days, me and my family actually got pretty good at finding our platforms and train times. So to get into the platforms, you can either use like a phone app or you can get the physical card. And the one we went with was the Suica card. And as you can see, they use a really cute penguin as their mascot. And they know how popular the Suica Penguin is, so of course they have merch. I saw a video that there was a Suica Penguin store at Tokyo Station, but I couldn't find where it was anywhere. So sadly I couldn't get anything there, but I did find out that they also sell merchandise at New Day's convenience stores. So whenever I saw New Day's, I would run and see if there was any Suica Penguin merch. And I did find some things, so I got this pass holder to keep my Suica card in. So it was really easy to just tap into the machine. <laughs> and I loved him so much that I even got like this credit card application just because it has him on the cover. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about his little face that's just too, too cute. And he was all around the stations, which made me so happy to see him every time. And then on my very last day in Japan, I luckily found some more Suica Penguin stuff. There was a waffle patisserie store that was selling this cooler bag to store your waffles in. So this is an insulated bag, and it has the Suica Penguin right in the front along with their waffles. So this I was thinking could be a really cute lunchbox maybe. And then speaking of mascots and characters, here are some keychains that I got. So at Shibuya Station, I was most excited to see the Hachiko statue. So if you guys don't know about Hachi's story, it's the story of a very loyal dog that touched the hearts of many people in Japan and worldwide. So every day Hachi's owner, Professor Ueno, would go to Shibuya Station to travel for work. And Hachi would wait at the station every day waiting for his owner to come back home. And then one day, Professor Ueno unfortunately passed away, uh, but Hachi never stopped waiting for him, going every day to this train station, hoping to see him again one day. And Hachi continued waiting there for years, which grabbed the attention of like the locals, but also the newspapers, and the story quickly followed through. And it was even made into a Japanese movie, but also an American movie featuring Richard Gere. <laughs> And so when I went to Shibuya Station, I knew I had to visit Hachi. I was really happy to find that they have Hachi merch at the tourist like station there. So I grabbed a little Hachi charm. Really adorable, and it also has a tag that says Shibuya Heart Hachi. Another mascot that I met was Wonko Kyodai. So as I said, there are mascots for prefectures and cities in Japan, and Wonko Kyodai is the mascot of Iwate, the prefecture of my ancestors. So Iwate is very famous for their Wonko Soba, which is where you see how much soba noodles you can eat. There are ladies there who will serve you soba noodles in these bowls, and they get stacked, stacked up, and at the end they count how many bowls you got to eat. My brother actually participated in this and he ate 100 bowls of soba. And usually you eat soba in the new year to provide good luck, so I think my brother is set with good luck this year. <laughs> And so to go with Wonko Soba, their mascot is a bowl of soba noodles. And Kyodai means brothers or siblings. So this is just one of the variations of this character. He has like little brothers and sisters with other foods from Iwate. So I'm glad I got to pick him up too. And I also picked up this really nice keychain at one of the stations that has my name and a bunny for the year of the rabbit this year. Another cute mascot that I learned about was 
Kabuki Nyantaro. So Kabuki Nyantaro is a character from San Rio. So the same company that made Hello Kitty, My Melody, Keropi, and Kabuki Nyantaro, as you might have guessed, is all about Kabuki Theater. So I found out about him at the train station by the Kabuki Theater in Ginza, and I think he was made to promote the theater and to bring more people interested in this traditional art. Because Kabuki Theater has traditionally been for the wealthy and the older generations, creating a mascot like Nyantaro is a great way to create appeal to the younger generations. So he is a really adorable calico cat with a green collar and I don't know every cat made me think of udon in Japan because I missed him so much so I totally fell in love with Kabuki Nyantaro. And also for Kabuki Nyantaro I picked up this hand towel at the Kabuki station as well. It's just the cutest design with him in the center with his little cat toe beans. So what I also found really interesting in Japan is that a lot of their public bathrooms actually don't have like any paper towels. So what they do is they instead sell these little hand towels that you can put in your purse or backpack and have something to dry your hands with. So along with the Nyantaro one, my mom got me this My Neighbor Totoro one, which has some really pretty embroidery. And this is the one that I actually opened up and used at the public bathrooms. Another towel that I got is one with the other Wonko Kyodai characters. So this one has a lot more of the siblings together. And as I said before, they feature the other popular foods of Iwate, such as mochi, edamame beans, uni, uh, sea urchin, and they also have the wonko soba at the bottom here as well. And the last towel that I brought home was one that I got at the Onsen Hot Springs. So this is a towel that you would use for the baths and the resort actually let us keep it. So it's a good way to remember our time at the traditional Ryokan Inn. Okay, so up next I'm going to be talking about the Hyakuen or dollar store and I have quite a few stuff. <laughs> so my friends from California might be aware of Daiso, which is a Japanese 100 yen store and they have a lot of stores here in America too. But I was excited to find out that there are a lot of items in the Japanese Daiso and other Hyakuen stores that aren't sold in America. So there was quite a lot of stuff that I had never seen before and Daiso and Hyakuen stores are a great place to find affordable yet really cool souvenirs. So up first I saw this kitty tape dispenser. So you can put washi tape or regular tape in the back here and then you rolled it down so it looks like the cat's tongue. I don't know, I thought it was really cute and my brother got the Shiba Inu one. Another cat thing, I got this kitty humidifier. <laughs> Again, really random, but I couldn't help it because it was too cute. And I'm not, I've never used one of these non like electric humidifiers before. I'm not sure if it works. It says that you just put water in like the clay piece and it will just evaporate. I'm not sure how well it works, but I thought it was really nice. I got these glasses wipes, which claimed would stop the like fogginess when you eat hot stuff like ramen or when you wear masks. So I wanted to try it out and I don't know how this works either but it surprisingly works pretty well. We went to several ramen shops and my glasses were not fogging up. I also got this other glasses wipe that has the Vocaloid characters like Hatsune Miku. I was really really happy to find Vocaloid merch. This is a My Melody pack of makeup wipes which I'm not sure how much I will use because I just feel wasteful <laughs> using such a cute makeup wipe and throwing it away. And before I got the Suica Penguin card holder, I also got this Cinemural card holder. So you can put your Suica card in here and it'll be e really easy to just swipe through the machine. And again, Hyakuen, one dollar! I got this pen that has a hanko stamp on the top, and this one has uh, Sato, my last name, in kanji. So this one's a little more like the traditional hanko stamps that has the family name written in kanji. I got this pack of Sumiko Gudashi origami paper! And I also got this miniature tatami mat, and this miniature lounging beach chair. 
that I thought would be really great to display my Sumiko Gudashi plushies in. So for I bought the tatami one specifically for the tonkatsu and ebi fry since they're wearing traditional clothing and how cute is that it's so perfect also from the hyakuen store my brother and i picked up these sakuma drops and we really wanted to make sure we picked one of these tins up because on january 20th which for me right now recording this is going to be this upcoming week sakuma's drops is going to be discontinued after 100 and 14 years. And you may recognize this tin from the movie Grave of the Fireflies, uh, where the little girl has this tin of Sakuma's drops, and it looks exactly like this. And it's a symbol of like her innocence and childhood hope amongst the devastation of war. Uh, so it's a very iconic candy, and I'm very sad to hear that it's gonna be gone soon. But we will definitely be keeping the tin to remember. There was a street vendor that I found that was selling these really nice designs of tabi socks. So tabi socks, as you can see, have these toe separations that you would traditionally wear with geta or zori shoes. Uh, and so the sandals wouldn't get caught with the, the socks. And so with, from the street vendor, I got the Shiba Inu design and this other design with a Michael or a Geisha. And then I got another pair of tabi socks from the Ryokan. They had uh, yukata and hanten jackets for guests to wear during your stay. And they included uh, tabi socks for the outfit that you could take home. On to stationery! So these items I also got from a Japanese 100 yen store. I got these two designs of letter sets. They're from the same collection that feature animals and like sweets, which I thought was so, so adorable. I of course had to pick up the cat set and there's a bunch of kitties on like a lemon popsicle and this penguin set that has a penguins and one seal uh, on a melon and a fruit salad. And at the same store, I also picked up these flake stickers uh, that have some Japan iconography and foods. So this set has things like sushi, green tea, and this set has Mount Fuji, uh, daikon radish, my favorite mitarashi dango, uh, and onigiri, and other traditional foods. And my dad sweetly got me this set of Copic markers from a bookstore. I have been really dreaming of having Copic markers for a very long time. The only set that I have is a really small starter set that my uncle got me years ago and I only use it for like special occasions. So I was really really happy to get this new set of 24 colors. And the packaging is really pretty too with lemons and strawberries and macarons. And there's also a really nice variety of colors that I'm really excited to play around with. So thank you, Dad! Also at the bookstore, I picked up some magazines. Magazines in Japan are also so nice and well made. I got this one of Disney Fan. And again, because it's the year of the rabbit, we have Thumper and Miss Bunny right in the cover. And this issue also comes with some postcards of some other Disney bunnies. So this magazine shows a bunch of the new goodies that are coming up for the New Year's, like the uh, New Year's collection that I showed you guys previously that I got a lot of stuff from. We also have a page about the new show at Tokyo Disney Sea called Believe Sea of Dreams. I sadly didn't win the lottery to see this show but I hope I can see it in the future. The magazine also even has a whole calendar inside and has some really nice designs from Disney merch and parks photos. I also really like this page about kimono bounding. This kimono is designed after Sorcerer Mickey and I was really excited to see this type of Disney bounding with traditional fashion like I like to do. I also got this beauty and fashion magazine and what's really awesome about magazines in Japan, especially the fashion and beauty ones, is that you often get a prize inside. So this one came with a whole mini makeup palette that I'm going to be showing you guys later. And it's a really nice way to try out the tutorials that they feature in the articles. 
And since we're talking about magazines, I also wanted to show you guys the many free uh, pamphlets that I got at the train stations and stores. So I got to see quite a few actually kimono stores and a lot of them were rental stores where people will rent kimono and furisade for girls' 20th birthdays. Oh, so this is a booklet from a store that I went to and they saw how much I loved kimono and I showed them my kimono princess project and so the lady kindly gave me this little book that has a whole bunch of kimono photos that the girls can choose from for their big day. So it's a great little photo book that I can also take inspiration from. Here is another kimono booklet that I got from another store. Everyone's just so nice and they saw how much kimono means to me so they were really happy to give me these books. And here are the manga that I got. And how cute is this bag too? Everything is just too cute! <laughs> so I got this really nice issue of Inuyasha. It's actually the last volume. And Inuyasha is one of my all-time favorite series, both uh, manga and anime. So I knew I had to grab one. And it's all in Japanese, but they do have furigana for the kanji. Uh, so it should be easier to read for me and it's also a nice way to practice my language skills. And I also picked up another last volume and this one is for Shingeki no Kyojin or Attack on Titan. And this is also the very last issue. So I thought it was a nice way to wrap up by grabbing the last book after uh, following the story for such a long time as well. Okay, moving on to beauty now. So this is the makeup palette that I got in the magazine that I talked about. So it has some really nice eyeshadow shades, a little lip gloss, and quite a few of these glitters that have been really trendy in Japan. Every girl that I saw had these really pretty glittery eyes and so I wanted to try it out too. And since this came with the magazine, it was a really great deal. And I kind of fell in love with the glittery eyeshadow, so I bought another mini one at 7-Eleven. And this one has the most beautiful shimmer. I am so obsessed with it. And then I got some other stuff from Canmake, which is a Japanese beauty brand. This one's like a setting powder with some SPF, I think. <laughs> I wanted to grab it because it has a really pretty compact design and when you open up it has like a little cushion and then you lift for the beautiful powder moon shape. And I also got this moisturizer from Canmake that is like mermaid theme <laughs> and that is one of the reasons I grabbed it. I haven't been able to test it out yet, but I will definitely try it and let you guys know. And this one is also a new product that I have never tried before. I thought it was a mascara, but then I was reading the instructions more closely. And it's like a hair gel that comes in a mascara container uh, that you can use to control flyaways and things like that. So I also saw a lot of the girls in Japan use this on their fringe or little baby hair flyaways and that seemed to really control it. Uh, so I wanted to try it out. And this one that I chose is from a brand called And Honey and this is a Sakura Cherry Blossom scent that is really nice. And for hair, I picked up this hair treatment from the Ryokan Hot Spring. The onsen bath had a whole bunch of lotions, creams, and treatments at the bathhouse uh, that you could try for free. This was one that I really liked and they had it at their store so I thought I would bring some home. It just made my hair feel really nice and silky so I wanted to keep that going. And also for my bangs, I got this roller that heats up with a USB plug <laughs> uh, and so it gets heated up and then you put it in your bangs and because of the heat it holds up a lot more during the day. And I also picked up this Rila Kuma shampoo and conditioner set simply because of the packaging <laughs> but I'm sure that the product is also really nice as well. I'm excited to use it. Oh, but don't Look who came to visit! <laughs> no? No? <laughs> and for Udon, we wanted to bring him something from Japan as well. And so we chose this onigiri toy. I think this is meant for dogs, but Udon really likes these tugging type toys. And the plushy ones too. And this one also has a squeaker. 
Udonna has a whole bunch of toys that are food themed. <laughs> and we also got Udon some actual cat food that he is already very much enjoying. <laughs> Certainly not least, I got some stuff from Mr. Donut. I've been seeing a lot of Japan vlogs uh, for a long time that they often feature Mr. Donut. So I was very happy to finally try it out for myself. And I <laughs> I also picked up like their kids meal that just because of the bag that has the really nice characters and this cup with the Pond de Lion mascot. I went to two Mr. Donut stores just to get the Pikachu snowman donut and like everything it was super adorable and I really loved Mr. Donut's donuts. They were so light and airy and the Pond de Ring ones were my favorite. And that wraps up my Japan haul. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the cute things that I got to bring back home. Apart from these amazing souvenirs, I also had the most magical once-in-a-lifetime experiences there that I will never forget. Let me know what you guys enjoyed the most and I'll see you guys soon! Bye!